I'm Emily. And I'm Amber. And we're co-founders of Blue Latitudes. I graduated from Connecticut College with my degree in environmental studies. And right after undergrad, I had the opportunity to go down and work on the BP oil spill as a field technician. That meant we were essentially taking biota samples, water samples, sediment samples, so that we could better understand the full extent and impact of the oil spill. During that time, BP had hired a lot of the fishermen that had lost their jobs to driver boats. And they would always just rave about how unbelievable the fishing was on these oil platforms. And at the time, that just seemed bizarre because here we are, you know, cleaning up and understanding the impacts of this oil spill that resulted from these oil platforms. And yet the fishermen were saying that they were also hot spots for marine life. That's the first time I heard about the Rigs to Reefs program. And when I moved to California to go to graduate school at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, I knew I wanted to study those platforms more. And that's when I met Amber. My background is a little bit different. I grew up in California and I always had a love and a passion, curiosity for the ocean. And I went and continued to follow that passion throughout my academic studies up at UC Berkeley. I got my degree in marine science. And when I graduated, I started working for this program at Google called Google Ocean in partnership with the Sylvia Earle Alliance. And what we did is we were able to take these complex ideas in ocean science and relate them to the public through Google Earth and Google Maps. What was great about this experience is that I learned how much I loved communicating the value of a healthy ocean and the importance of conservation in storytelling and really talking about these important issues with the public. So I went down to Scripps Institution of Oceanography to get my master's and that's where I met Emily. And she told me about the Riggs to Reef program. And I just thought that that sounded like one of the most interesting ideas. How could we communicate to the public that there could potentially be value in repurposing some of these offshore structures as reefs. She told me about the work that she had been doing in the Gulf of Mexico and I said, well, you know, here in California, we actually have oil platforms. We have 27 offshore oil and gas platforms. And what if those are reefs? And if they are, what does that mean from an economic, ecological, and social perspective? So we decided to really dive into that question for our master's thesis at Scripps. And when we graduated, we had a lot of momentum going behind the work that we had been doing. So we started Blue Latitudes, which is a marine environmental consulting firm. We're women owned and we work at the intersection of industry and the environment to really look at these challenges that are surrounding how we use our oceans and how we can use them without using them up. But before we go any further, you might be wondering, well, what is the Rigs to Reefs program? Why would an oil platform ever be considered a healthy and functioning reef? Well, the answer lies in the structure itself. Stretching from seafloor all the way to sea surface, these platforms can be as tall as the Empire State Building, creating a lot of real estate for marine life. Additionally, they can be quite complex, lots of beams and cross beams providing nooks and crannies for fish to make their permanent homes on. And now, when oil wells start to eventually dry up and an oil company makes the decision that they want to remove an oil platform or decommission it, they can also make the decision to reef it, meaning they would sever it about 85 feet, remove everything that goes above the sea surface and either topple that structure onto its side or tow it to an alternative location. And that is what the Rigs to Reefs program is, turning these offshore oil platforms into artificial reefs. We realize that Rigs to Reef isn't something that's just relegated here in the United States. This is something that could potentially be incorporated into every offshore environment because there are oil platforms in almost every ocean around the world. And so we really started to understand and try and learn more about what the, these different issues in conservation could be where we're looking at these two typically very oppositional groups. You look at scientists and then you look at industry. Um, marine scientists like Emily and I working with oil and gas, they typically don't mix together. But what we found is that the future of ocean conservation might be finding those opportunities where we do get to work together. Because the reality is, is that we both drive cars and we use those resources offshore that these oil and gas production facilities provide. And maybe we play a small part in the fact that they're out there. So perhaps we can find a way to work with offshore oil and gas companies and work together to 
find a silver lining to those structures offshore, a second life for them. Once they're done and finished producing oil and gas, can we repurpose those structures into artificial reefs and potentially have a story for conservation? So what does our job look like from nine to five? Well, it can vary. Some days you might find us scuba diving on the oil platforms. Other times you might find us using remotely operated vehicles to do surveys of the marine life that's found on these platforms. Because you have to remember, we're limited recreationally by divers to about 100 feet. With an ROV, we can go all the way down to the deepest depths of the ocean. There's oil and gas equipment all the way down at 7,000 feet that has potential to host marine life. So other times you might find us on research expeditions. We recently traveled to Malaysia to go and investigate an oil platform there that they've converted into an ecotourism resort. So our day job can look different every single day and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so feel free to follow along with us. You can find us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at the Blue Latitudes Foundation. You can also check out our website, rig2, that's the number two, reefexploration.org or feel free to reach out to Emily and I. We'd love to hear your questions and talk to you more about these new and important issues in ocean conservation. Thanks everyone.